Hello everybody, welcome to Hook, Line and Sinker, Nick. <laughs> yes, we're fishing again on the fishing show, folks. Who can believe it? We're tuna fishing, but Hardy, today it's with a difference. Oh, with a big difference, Nick. We're going to show you a new technique. We're in fact going to invent a new technique, <laughs> folks. You've got a tuna on. Yep. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, look, stay with us and we'll show you Hook, Line and Sinker's secret technique. Brought to you by the Dugon and the Ha. Oh! Whack. Got plenty on there. <laughs> there you are, ladies and gentlemen, Southern Bluefin Tuna. folks well as we were saying it's something different on the show today now this isn't that different Andrew all we're doing is trail this fish up we have we have but we've it's, we it's seen a it pretty yet. good day it's overcast yep. which is good it's nice and calm we're after just your albacore and your yellowfin and whatever else but we're gonna catch them on bait Nick well hopefully that's the plan folks if it doesn't pan out that way we've already we've caught this one on a lure but that's true we've got some colour down <coughs> some there colour now down this is there. a good big albacore now, there's quite a We're few... We're at St Helens, incidentally. We are, sorry. There's quite a few bigger albacore... Oh. oh! Don't swear, because swearing isn't good for the kiddies that are watching the show, Nick. Oh, yeah. Sorry, kids. Sorry. Now this is the uh, the secret, folks. Our secret technique today. Next time we get a fish on Hardy, yeah, we are going to throw these in the water. Yes, these are cubes, pilchard cubes. In fact, big pilchards. We bought ten kilos of them at an inordinate cost. We did. <laughs> um, so this is our our chance to try something a little bit different. I guess most people, when they go tuna fishing, you just come out here and you troll. That works pretty well too, incidentally. This is sort of uh, in an effort to try something different. Cube's about that big. You want them to sink pretty quickly because obviously the fish are holding down. And apparently the key is you chuck a couple in until you can't see them anymore, then you chuck a couple more in. And then all the fish start swimming around the boat. You have a huge school of fish. You put a hook in a cube, you throw that over the side, bang, you're on. That is the theory. Andrew. Sounds good, Nick, sounds good. All we need is another fish or two. Or three. Keep chopping up filchards. Folks, we've got a multiple hookup here, and this is what we were hoping for. So, oh, you're throwing cubes in the water there. We're cubing. We're cubing. We're cubing. What do you think about that? That was terrific. Absolutely terrific. It was very, very quick thinking. Now, what we want to do, folks, obviously, there are fish in the vicinity, and they aren't everywhere. So, where they are is we is where we want to give them. Bit of incentive to stick around. These are not bad albacore no, either, by the nice. feel of it. Very nice. Ah. Now, the thing about cubing in Tasmania, Nick, because yep. cubing in uh, places like New South Wales is an extremely popular thing. Yep. And we're not going to pretend we know too much about cubing, but. Oh, I'm telling we'll you. Have a go. We'll have a go at it. And we'll have uh, a go at talking about it. Charlie the Decky. Oh! Ooh. Now, anyway, as I was saying, yeah. folks, cubing in, uh, in New South Wales, what they tend to do is go to a structure, yep. such as a reef Back or... cubing, don't be afraid to cube. Sorry, yeah. Um, such as a reef or an, an island like Montague Island, where the, the fish hang out. Yeah. And, uh, ah, I will keep talking, folks. And they cube there, and they cube, and they cube, and they cube till fish come along. But in Tassie, Basically, there's not enough 
well structures and the fish <laughs> tend to be spread out a bit. So what we're doing today, or what our theory is, we're going to find the fish and then start cubing. We'll and cube. uh, all right, all right, I'm cubing. And shortly, folks, we'll show you that cubing works. Well, We've got? never actually cubed before, so we're not going to pretend we know what we're doing. Ah! That's nice nice albacore. Six or seven kilo albacore. All right, so there. Hey. Just uh, don't want to interrupt your uh, fascinating bit there, but. And here they come. That's another very, very solid fish. And there's another one. All right. Sorry, Matt, this is a bit chaotic, folks, but uh, it'll get better than this. I don't know whether the fishing will get any better than that. Fair dink, have a go at that. There you go. There's your albacore tuning. You've seen it before on the show. There's no, uh, there's no big surprise there. But what we would hope to see is a few of those swimming around the back of the boat. I'm cubing. Cube away. Right, -o. well the engines are off folks and we are uh, at a dead drift and we're cubing now. It's, the excitement in the air is palpable. Hardy's just tossing a few over the side there. You think, what's your, what's your secret there, mate? Uh, I think presentation of the cubes very important. Yes. How it hits the water. Yes. Um, you don't want it to hit the water too hard, otherwise no. you might spook the tuna. That's right. It's like trout fishing. Okay, so after the break, we'd be expecting to see this whole area behind the back of the boat absolutely alive with tuna. After the break. <laughs> You'd hope so. Softly into the water, folks. Oh, yeah. Softly. Like this? Sort of more like, of a more like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good. All right, welcome back. We are cubing off beautiful St. Helens. We've caught some nice tuna. We know they're in the area. We're just throwing in the odd cube. This is our rig. It's a cube. We're really going to trick the fish today, folks, because they're going to eat the cubes. They're going to come up the cube trail, eat the cube, eat the cube, eat the cube. Then suddenly, those dopey fish, they're going to eat a cube with a hook in it, and we're going to catch them. All right. That's the theory. We come up with brilliant theories on this show, Nick. The execution's not usually that good. No, but we come up with the theories. Yeah. Righto, folks. Well, you can see out the back of the boat, unfortunately about 200 yards out the back of the boat, some birds working. We have been uh, cubing for quite some time now. Cubing and burlying and... Uh, we haven't had uh, too much action. That's probably why cubing isn't a really popular technique here in Tasmania, but that's not to say it doesn't work. There is a little bit of interest starting to be shown out the back here. What's going on here? I've got, I've got a bait out on that one and uh, just a jig out on here just to pass the time. Andrew, uh, you had something bite you off. I had a hook up, Nick. Yeah, a hook up, possibly a shark. We weren't quick enough to pick up the camera. No. But uh, we have been building, as I say, probably close to an hour now. And uh, yes, the back of the yep. boat's not alive with tuna. We come up with good a few theories. Signs. A few signs, you never know. We'll give it a bit more, then we'll probably go and uh, troll up again and see if we can't find another huge school. All right, now, we are still cubing. It's proving to be an absolutely dud technique at the moment, but uh, we've moved inshore. Just behind us here is uh, Elephant Rock. But here, you can see a fish popping all out of the water. We've obviously uh, moved inshore, and hopefully what we're gonna try and do, with uh, cubing, frankly, did not uh, raise any tuna whatsoever. It's a bit stupid. Yeah, I think that's basically what's wrong with it. Yeah. But uh, there's the possibility in here, on the inshore grounds, uh, perhaps a kingfisher, a 
big salmon or something like that. We've got a lot of mackerel and bits and pieces. You can actually getting lots of little bites. But the bait that we've got on is probably just a bit too big for the uh, mackerel to take. But with the mackerel around the back of the boat, that might uh, encourage some other bigger things to come and have a look. You just never know. Or Tubing, you... though. What a deadly technique. It's stupid. All right, you cubing fanatics, you'd be well pleased with that. Wasn't it exciting? Now, this is Chris Pratt, our skipper for the day of Blue Water Sports Fishing Charters. Pratty, that was sensational. Cubing, you wouldn't do anything else, would you? No, Nick, no, you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> no, when you run out of fuel, it's great. Uh, I think, uh, you know, let's get trolling and keep moving. Uh, probably a great, uh, great alternative some other day, mate. It does seem to work pretty well, the old trolling folks. Uh, and the saying is, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So. Cubing, I think we might uh, we might forget that. But if you would like to have a go at cubing, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you'd like to have a go, this is what you do. The key ingredient for a day's cubing is cubes. We chopped up and threw away about 10 kilos of pilchards over a two hour period. The best time of year to give it a try is January to April when the tuna are about in reasonable numbers. As always, when in St Helens we fished aboard Striker 2, give skipper Chris Pratt a ring at Blue Water Sports Fishing Charters. Coming up after the break, it's time to get serious. We're on a life or death mission in the Highlands. Welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, Nick, a more serious side. Look, a very, very serious uh, aspect of hook, line and sinker today. We are fishing uh, security out there. You can see... US President George W. Bush fishing yeah. in the Great Lakes. What we're doing is on the lookout. Yeah, secure the western side. The western side. For any sort of suspicious activity. And, yeah, copy uh, that. Our job is to protect the great man. Not to fish, this is just a prop. Roger that. Copy that. We're all right. Actually, hang on. Fish. Ooh, hang on. It's fish. Up there, Hardy. Well, I thought I saw a sniper, Nick. Oh, a sniper in the hills. Yeah, you're and, always uh, vigilant. That's the thing. You've got to keep a lookout because those new sniping guns, 800 metres, yep, up off the head. Yep. Our poor president, wherever he is. Yeah, whatever. Down there now. It's a bit boggy. It's a bit boggy, but this. Look at that. Is a very nice fish. Look at you. Hey. That's sensational. That's a very nice trout. Let's go over there to the. Let's uh, take it camera. over. We'll be over directly, oh, folks. Very hard almost to walk went here. down. Oh, oh, my tyre's blown a bit funny. Oh. Oh. Now, I tell you what. Good exercise. I'm not very fit. No. But anyway, that's all right. You're a heck of a fisherman. Oh, a heck of a fly fisherman. Look at that guy. Now, this. We are here. The president yep. has brought us here. Here he is. The here president. he is. The president. Come over here, president. President, of course, being Brian Green. Brian Green, President of oh. Tasmania. Oh. Well, president. Jim Bacon's not the here. The next President of Tasmania. I've dropped in there. No, now, the President is, of course, Brian Green, the uh, the Premier of Tasmania. Uh, you've got that wrong, old. No? Oh. Look, I feel a lot safer, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm not the Premier of Tasmania. No, Brian Green is, of course, folks, our Environment Minister, and uh, he's taken us fishing today. He's picked the spot. You've picked the weather, mate. It's a beautiful day. You guys have given me another very, very difficult task, but you're up to it. Oh, I don't know about that, but now we've caught a fish. Lovely Great Lake fish. Brown trout? Now, it's 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 after trout season, folks, so it's cold. It's nearly winter. Great Lake is open all year round. That's why we're here. We're showing you the fishery that you can go to when the season's not on. Now, Greeny, that's one of your flies, mate. <laughs> you haven't seen people get that at. Yeah, hang, hang on. Listen, fish, listen, mate. You, got, you can't get that close to the president, all right? Get away from the president. I'm going to let him go. Oh, 
long. Oh, you are. That's very an long. Outstanding caster. Very it's long. Very impressive the way you carve. Thanks. No, that's all right. You know, I'll give you a compliment when there's a compliment there to be given. That's what I'm after. Now, Nick, we are, uh, as mentioned earlier, in the Great Lake. Literally in it. Tell the people at home about the Great Lake, Nick. The Great Lake is great. That's right. Now, we uh, it's very low at the moment, the Great Lake. Yep. So it's just the Great Lake. Yeah. Uh, this is Reynolds Island. Yes. We've Not actually an island at the moment. No. Given that you can walk to it. More of a, a spit. Would you an call it? isthmus. An isthmus. Yes. Um, so basically, what we're sort of walking down the banks. The prime minister's over there. Yeah. Uh, he just missed one apparently. Yeah. Um, we, where we, it, it looks like the moon more or less. Yeah. Or the desert, perhaps yeah. would be better. But the cold desert. Yeah. Yeah. With my jacket got wet too. My jacket got wet too. You, you really have to put this a lot security of personal business. sacrifice into being a, a secret service agent. Yeah. Um, but what I'm trying to say, and I will get there eventually, yeah. is um, that even though it looks barren, yeah, this, Roger will this bay, there is weed and there's a channel and there's a drop-off. We're fishing the, the drop-off into the weed. We can see them through our spotters. Yeah. And We've caught a fish already. We haven't been here long. You're spinning. Yeah, I'm spinning. Got the little, uh, you know, the, what do you call that? A lofties uh, something or other. Going beautifully at the minute. What number is that? It's a 24. Yeah, right. Well, folks, we're just going to keep going. Yeah, just uh, keeping coming, mate. It uh, looks pretty good through here. Yeah, roger that, mate. Uh, no sign of any uh, activity here. I've got an alarm of some sort. Just keep going. Don't worry too much about that. Okay, sniper. There's a sniper in the area. Green. Welcome back to Hook, Line and Sinker, folks. It is almost the middle of winter. We're in our suits, Nick. Mm, at um, the Great Lake. Synthetic fibre. It's very, very uh, warming, isn't it? Dries well, too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. 100% yeah. rayon. Don't stand by the heater. No. Now, we are still at the Great Lake. Still trying to catch a... Well, we're not. We're obviously, as we said earlier, we're not fishing. We're not trying to fish today. The one you caught, yeah. that was a fluke. But uh, well, and, and you were just trying to blend into the crowd. I was, and yeah. I, I wanted to go undercover there for a minute That's because we brilliant. we really want to fit in up here. Yeah. Um, you know, as the you Mayana see, pub. It's a rough spot, and if we walk in there, yeah, there's a, a lot of people about. So we're uh, we're pretty busy up here. Yeah, of course, pre that. protecting the president, the premier, uh, the prime minister, the minister, the minister. So. Hopefully he's going to catch a fish shortly or else so uh, we're going to have to do more of this sort of rubbish. And probably you'll never actually get to see this, so... Yeah. All right, we're going Hopefully to not. go to the car now. OK. Uh, we're returning to the car. Yeah. Now, just let me do myself up here. I'm being a little bit chilly being your Secret Service agent. <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can do it. Now, you've got one, finally. Finally, mate. Uh, now, that's a nice, another nice brown trout. Yeah, it is. I mean, they're, obviously they're all getting pretty close to spawning now, so they're not easy to catch. I mean, we've had to battle away all day. No, I don't think they're that interested in food, are they? The, the, the no, it's, it's probably part of the problem. I'll try and grab it. Nevertheless, they, they go all right. They go all right, mate. Yeah. It doesn't make much difference. Oh, oh geez, it's a snake, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what you call your great lake snake, Granny? Yeah, oh. yeah, terrible fish. <laughs> I mean, the. the the lake's been low for some time, as you know, and the funny thing is the fish earlier in the year were quite good. But, right. um, but I guess, you know, being down and uh, the numbers of fish in here, and of course that's part of the reason that the uh, IFS transfer a lot of these fish out to the western lakes where they get a better opportunity. Yeah, okay. And they become a trophy fish out there. So, because so, there's a lot of fish in the Great Lake, isn't there? Oh, People there don't realise. No, and the spawning facilities around the lake are fantastic. Of okay. course, you know, they're all, they're all wild fish, so... It, uh, a fish that struggles here becomes a trophy fish in another water, which is really what it's all about. They're still wild fish. Yeah. They've just been transported out of this particular water. So Reynolds Island's a good place, particularly early in the season. And, is it? Yeah. And then around Christmas time, uh, when you get a lot of terrestrial stuff, beetles and stuff, uh, jacids later in the year's been fantastic. Hang on, mate. It's, it's always been hard to, to shut the minister up, isn't it, folks? <laughs> With a golden goose, a golden goose. Well done, mate. I'll tell you what, guys. <laughs> well I feel, done. I feel very safe. Don't worry about me. <laughs> no, we do worry about you. We do. There could be snipers. Or some of them, in fact, I think I can see them. I'm going to go and tackle them. 
See you next year, boys. The Great Lake is one of several waters that remain open to fishing all year. If you're crazy enough, there are some nice fish to be caught out of season. Wet flies like Yetis or Mrs Simpsons are our number one bet. The number one tip, take a jumper of a suit. On behalf of Minister Brian Green, the Honourable Brian Green, the very dishonourable Andrew Hart, <laughs> And myself, that has been another episode of Hook, Line and Sinker. Extreme episode of Hook, Line and Sinker. Thanks for your time. Shallow water, mate. Plenty of mud it takes to build a sizer. We'll see you next week. <laughs>